Good day and welcome back to our channel. My name is Angelo Boswell. I'm a Technical Alignment Manager for Tektron Business IT Services. We provide effective and efficient solutions for small to medium sized enterprises across South Africa specializing in the Microsoft stack. This quick video is all about managing identities using Microsoft Intra ID. So without any further ado, let's jump into it. All right, so the first exercise is to create a user account in the Microsoft Intra Admin Center. So to do that, the first thing you'll need to do is head over to intra.microsoft.com, then navigate to users, select all users. Next, you're gonna select new user. This will then give you an option to either select a and create a new user or invite an external user to collaborate with your organization. In this example, I'll be creating a new, new user. The first thing you need to do is create the user principal name. It will also be used as the email address. So for this example, I'll be using Jet Lee. And you'll also see it appears in the mail nickname section. So it's currently selected to derive from the user principal. You can also uncheck the tick box and change that mail nickname to whatever you desire. However, it's recommended that you leave it as the default. Then for the display name, you can enter the user's name. So I'll just type in Chet Lee. Alternatively, you can also add the company name in front. So I'll just show you what it looks like. So this is the name that will appear when the user signs into his or her device. Then you can either select, keep it as auto generate password, um, ensure that you copy the password and save it in a safe place, or you can create your own password. And the recommendation would be to use a uppercase, lowercase, special character, and a numerical value, and then keep the password length eight characters or longer. Once you've confirmed all of these items, you can then go ahead and either keep it as the account enabled or disable the account if you know that the user is only starting in a month's time. So for this example, I'll just leave it enabled and click next. Then under the properties, you'll type the first name, so Jet, last name, Lee. Then under user type, you can either select it to be a member as part of the organization or a guest that will only gain access to certain parts of the environment. Uh, guest access may be useful collaboration and so on, but will have limited access to your tenant. Optionally, you can also edit and create certificate user IDs. However, I'm not going to delve into that into the session. Um, you can then also add the job title company name, department, you can also add the employee ID, type, hire date, office location, contact information, and anything else that you require as part of your company standard. But the most important thing is under the settings tab, you'll see the usage location. You need to select the location where you are located. For this example, I'm selected, I'm selecting South Africa because that's where I'm based. You need to select your location because your Microsoft billing will be applied based on this. So if you select the US as an example, and you're not in the US, you'll be billed according to the US standard. So your bill might be more expensive than somebody located in a place like South Africa or Brazil. Now, once you confirmed, um, click on next to go to assignments. Under the assignments tab, you can add this user to a group or even add a role to it. So for this example, I'll just be adding the user to all company and help desk as well. Once I've confirmed those groups, I'll click select. And then to add a role, I can just add one of these. 
let's just check help disk administrator so i'll add him to the help disk administrator so as you can see a short description um, this user can reset passwords for non-administrators and help disk administrators then i'll click next i'll review all of the settings and configurations to confirm that everything is correct and then select create to create groups in microsoft enter admin center and identify simply navigate to groups all groups and then select new group then you'll have the option to either create a security or a microsoft 365 group to ensure that you create the correct group you can read the information tab to get a better understanding security groups are used to give group permissions access to applications resources etc however microsoft 365 groups are used for collaboration giving members access to mailboxes calendars files sharepoint sites etc so for this example because i want to give somebody access to a sharepoint site i'll use microsoft 365 group the group name i'll just add support disk under the group description i'll add and then i'll select a owner adele be the group owner and then members for convenience i'll add alan and myself i'll confirm the group settings and click create then to view your license and company branding simply navigate to billing license or products and then you'll have a overview of all the license assigned to your tenant then for company branding i'll head over to the search tab and then select under recent services i'll select company branding then select edit over here you have the ability to change the favicon background image background page color um, under layout you can modify the layout header header logo footer sign in form where you can change your logo and even add a custom message for all the users when they sign into your tenant once you confirm these settings you can click on next review and save to confirm your changes unfortunately i didn't make any changes so i can't save anything at this point and there you have it Thank you guys for taking the time out of your day to view this video. I hope that it added some value to you and your organization. Until next time, go well.